Welcome to Mexico City. In this Mexico City travel guide, I will tell you everything that you need to know for your first visit. So we'll discuss the best things to do, the best areas to stay, practical tips for how to get around, and perhaps most importantly, I'll share a few things with you on what to expect of Mexico City. The first thing you should really know is that Mexico City is big, like really big. With over 22 million inhabitants, it is considered a mega city and it is one of the biggest in the world. If knowing that is already giving you some stress, if you think the city is going to be overwhelming, then actually luckily that's not really the case. I think that's because a lot of the things that visitors want to see, they're kind of clustered around maybe two or three different areas. And these areas happen to be very walkable and very inviting. So certainly I don't have that sense that I'm in a mega city when I'm in Mexico City. What is overwhelming though is the sheer number of things that are to do in Mexico City. So we're gonna dig into that in this video. Mexico City is an absolute cultural powerhouse. The number of great museums is just staggering. And that's maybe not something that everyone expects. You know, when people go to Paris or Rome or Athens, they know that there's gonna be great museums, so they put some time in their schedule to check them out. I'm not sure if that association is as strong with Mexico City, but let me tell you, without exaggeration, the museums are incredible. Because there's so many of them, let me give you a bit of a starter pack. The absolute must-see is the Anthropological Museum. You have to go to this because this is the uh, museum with the biggest collection of artifacts from the pre-Columbian civilization. The Aztecs, the Mayans, the Olmecs, all of these civilizations are represented. Nowhere else in the world are you going to find a museum on the pre-Hispanic cultures quite like this, so that makes it a definite must-visit. My second museum tip is a little bit different from what most travel guides seem to recommend. If you think of Mexico, you probably think of things like colorful flower patterns and stylized Day of the Dead figurines and all sorts of indigenous motifs, and that's exactly what you'll see at the Popular Art Museum. This underrated medium-sized museum focuses entirely on folkloric art and handcrafts. And that, I think, makes it a perfect introduction to Mexican culture. Thirdly, something that is uniquely Mexican in more of a contemporary way is the art by Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera. Now, if you don't know who these famous artists are, then I recommend watching the movie Frida with Salma Hayek, maybe on your flight to Mexico. Uh, this will clue you in on everything about this artistic couple. Diego Rivera was mostly known for his epic murals, so these really panoramic paintings uh, that have lots of detail and often show scenes from Mexican history. His works are kind of spread out across different buildings in the city. Uh, it's really worth checking out at least one of them. I think it's cool to do it with a guide because if you have a good guide, they will use kind of the things depicted in the murals as uh, little hooks to explain different things about Mexico. Now, the most famous mural is in the National Palace. Now this is a government building, so they don't let people in all the time. You need to have a reservation for it. If you don't have a ticket, then you can go to the Diego Rivera Mural Museum where you can see a different also very famous mural. Ridicalio's works are spread across multiple locations. For example, you could go to the Museo Dolores Almedo or to the Modern Art Museum. There's also the Frida Kahlo Museum, which is in the house where she grew up. I think this is all right. It's a little overpriced for Mexico. It's also very popular, so it can get crowded or you have to queue up a lot if you don't have tickets already. I prefer just seeing the art that she made. So that's kind of my starter pack, my suggestion for getting a cross-section of art and history from Mexico. But I I'm almost forgetting one more, which is the Templo Mayor. Mexico City used to be basically a, a big lake. 
like even here where I am right now, it was just water. And in the center of this lake was an island. And on top of that was, in the middle, a pyramid-like structure. Of course, the Spanish completely destroyed it when they conquered Mexico. Uh, since only the foundational ruins of the Templo Mayor are left, you do need a bit of imagination to think of what this would have looked like in the past. That said, it's highly worth seeing, and it also has an adjacent building with numerous artifacts, which cover some different themes and areas from the uh, Anthropological Museum. A good place to start for just a great overview of the city is the Torre Latinoamericana. This is one of the tallest office buildings and will give you a 360 degree panoramic view of Mexico City. Of course, be sure to check out the impressive Zócalo or Main Square and its adjacent Metropolitan Cathedral, the largest and oldest in Latin America. If at any point you find the city a bit much, you can always escape to Chapultepec Forest. This huge city park is home to many museums and small attractions, as well as a beautiful castle on top of a hill. For many more things to do in Mexico City, check out my blog for an exhaustive list, including information like opening hours and costs. Of course, there's a lot of high-end dining and Michelin star restaurants in this city. I see a lot of guides mention these, but to be honest, what I like to do is kind of look for a local kind of neighborhood restaurant. Of course, also, there is a lot of street food in Mexico City, and I do highly recommend taking a chance to sit down on a plastic chair, maybe channel your inner Anthony Bourdain. You can have a great lunch for like $2 or something by getting some nice tacos on the corner of the street. If at any point you're unsure what kind of tacos to order, uh, the default is usually listed first, which will probably be tacos al pastor, and more adventurous options like tribe or tong tend to be further down the list. I've already mentioned many things you can do within the center, uh, but there are also things a little bit outside of the center. The first place to consider going is uh, the pyramids of Teotihuacan. This is an amazing archaeological site and you can go there by yourself. If you first take the metro to the northern bus station, then you change onto a bus. That's what I did on my previous trip in Mexico City. And of course it was really cool and I climbed up to the top of the pyramid. But I was like, okay, I wish I knew a little bit more about this civilization and had a little bit more texture and color to this. Another super fun excursion is to go to Cochibilco, which is about 40 to 50 minutes south from the center. Now this area has a lot of canals, a lot of water, and there's these really colorful boats that can take you around and you can drink, eat, and enjoy music from some mariachi bands that uh, hop between the different boats there. You might think it's just a tacky tourist thing, but it's a lot of fun and it's something that local residents like to do, especially on the weekends when it will be a lot busier. I think it's nice to do this with a group because that way it'll be a lot more fun. And it's easier to pay for the mariachi bands. If everyone chips in like a dollar or something like that, you have a pot of money, goes to the mariachi band to play a few songs. Uh, it's cheaper and easier to do it that way when you're with a bunch of people. Finally, it's a lot of fun to catch a Lucha Libre show. This Mexican style of wrestling can be quite a spectacle. I thought it was fun to watch the show, but also I really liked watching the audience because they're all just like screaming their lungs out, getting super worked up about what is happening on stage and uh, sometimes cursing a lot and you're like, wow, are you doing this in front of your kids? Uh, and then, you know, they smile and walk out of there. And uh, again, this is kind of fun to do with a tour because you'll be with a bunch of people and you can kind of commentate on the, on the match as it is happening. Where you stay in uh, Mexico City is inevitably going to have a big impact on your experience. Because wherever your hotel or hostel is, that's where you keep coming back. And so you, you get a different slice of the city for sure. And I've seen lists of like 
top 20 neighborhoods to stay in Mexico City. But realistically, there are two areas that you are most likely to end up in. One is El Centro, and that's the area around the main square. So there you find a lot of government buildings and monuments and museums. And for just general sightseeing, that's actually a really convenient base to have. Now, one downside of El Centro, in my opinion, is that, okay, there's a lot of shopping streets, which is nice during the day, it's very lively. But at night, the, the shops close and they put down their rollers and it kind of gives an empty feeling to El Centro at night. Uh, it's a bit different here in this area. This is La Condesa and over there is Roma. These two neighborhoods are next to each other and they're very residential. They have lots of parks. They're very beautiful. It's almost like a fantasy version of Mexico City. It's also a little bit upscale and prices are also a little bit higher here. But I think for just a general vibe, this is a great area to stay. It is very hipstery. You can get your, your uh, craft beers, your specialty coffee, your poke, your sushi, everything is here. Um, but it is a bit more pricey, a bit more internationalized. And if you're allergic to the hipster factor, which is quite high here, then maybe you would prefer El Centro. But both of these areas are really great. They just have a, yeah, a different kind of experience. If you made it all this way into this video, you are surely deep into researching your trip. So why not check out the rest of my channel? I'll be showing some amazing places that are in the region around Mexico City and that you'll definitely won't want to miss if you have a couple of days to spare. Now, let's get back to Mexico City for some final tips. Let's cover a few practical tips for Mexico City. Things like how to get around, how to get money out, and so on. So the best way to get around is really to take taxis and Ubers. That is the most convenient. But you can also take the Metro. The advantage of the Metro is that it is very cheap. So if you're a backpacker trying to save some money, use the Metro because uh, one ticket to anywhere in the city will cost about $25 cent. So the metro was definitely made to uh, be a public good for use for anyone. Uh, it is a bit of a mad jumble though. It can be a little bit confusing and crowded. But yeah, I, I recommend uh, putting a map of the metro system on your phone because they don't show a lot of maps inside uh, the metro stations. And, and then it's pretty easy to get around. The next thing you might need is internet. Now you can get a local SIM card. I went to the company Telcel, which has uh, shops around the city, and for about 180 pesos, I got about uh, 5 gigabytes of data, unlimited use of social networks, and it's valid for like 30 days. So that is the kind of SIM card you can get here. Uh, there are other offers as well. Uh, if you're just staying in Mexico City though, uh, perhaps all you need is just the public Wi-Fi because they did an excellent job here providing Wi-Fi in squares, parks, even random streets. Look for the Wi-Fi signal called Internet para todos, which is uh, internet for everyone, and you'll be able to use free internet. And finally, how do you pay for things? Well, I wouldn't rely exclusively on things like credit cards or Apple Pay or things like that. It's a good idea to get some cash out. And the best way to get cash out is to go to an ATM. One thing to look for though is what the banks will charge you for the transaction. For example, the bank BBVA tried to charge me 180 pesos or like $9 for a single transaction which I thought was quite outrageous whereas other banks were more like 20 or 30 pesos so that's something to look out for. I hope this video has helped you plan your trip if so it would mean a lot to me as a youtuber starting out if you gave this a like or subscribe let me just say happy travels and hope you have a great time in Mexico.